Dr. Penn! Yes. Well, I, I've, I've been almost entirely blind for most of my life, and uh, I just, I, I, I really can't see. I see. Oh, sorry. I'd just like to know if there's any way you could identify the source, or, I don't know, maybe even treat it? Well, Mr. Humphreys, that is no small task. Please, Doctor, I've got a wife back home, and... I've never seen her face. I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to see her face. Well, Mr. Humphreys, there is one option I'd be willing to try with you. It's highly controversial, not yet perfected. Is it gene therapy? No. Ouija board. <laughs> Oh. Oh, wow. What? Tell me a little about your blindness. Well, within months after I was born, I showed frequent and involuntary eye movement. My retinas showed little to no activity in electroretinography tests, and my nervous system was all wacko. Doctors diagnosed me with Leber's congenital amaurosis, or LCA. Just as I thought. RPE65 is one of the genes known to cause LCA if it's messed up. If RPE65 doesn't work properly, it impedes the visual cycle, which is what makes a person see. Let's take a look at this film. But humans have two main types of light receiving cells, rods and cones. They live in the retina, which lines the back of the eye. They need 11 CIS retinol, which is a light sensitive form of vitamin A which, when coupled with an opsin signaling protein, forms what's called a visual pigment molecule. When light is present, the 11CIS retinol is isomerized, or transformed into all trans retinol, which activates the opsin signaling capability. Neither of these are light sensitive, so in the post isomerization absence of 11 CIS retinol, no more light is picked up by photoreceptor cells. The all trans retinol breaking free of the opsin protein makes its way to an outer segment of the photoreceptor cells where it's then converted into all trans retinol or pure vitamin A. The O for orange. It then moves to the retinal pigment epithelium or RPE, a layer lining the back of the eye directly below the retina. It is used to create all trans retinal esters. We'll call them esters. At this point, they come into contact with the RPE65 protein. It converts them to 11 CIS retinol, an enzyme called 11 CIS retinol dehydrogenase then oxidizes the 11 CIS retinol back into the original photosensitive 11 CIS retinol, retinol. When the 11 CIS retinol returns to the photoreceptor cells, it can once again covalently bond with an opsin protein and create another visual pigment molecule, completing the cycle. You do remember I can't see, right? Now if the Ouija board is right, it looks like a faulty RPE65 gene could be the culprit here. Now, LCA is a genetic disease, meaning it is caused by a single malfunctioning gene. In your case, a defective RPE65 gene results in a decreased regeneration of 11 CIS re retinal regeneration, and thus, no picture is picked up by photoreceptors. Well, what can we do? 
I propose we use gene therapy. Gene therapy, yeah, that's what I said before. Yeah, good. So do you know much about it? Well, yeah, actually, I've read quite a bit. So basically, when there's a genetic disease that's caused by a gene that doesn't work right, there's a way to actually find a working version of that gene and insert it into a person's genome to replace the bad one. How do they do this? Well, <laughs> do you know what a virus is? Yes. For viruses to replicate, they will normally attack the host cell, inserting their genetic material into it, which gives it instructions on how to keep making more of itself. Well, in gene therapy, the genes within the virus that cause viral diseases are removed and replaced with a good version of the gene that we're trying to replace. You see? Oh, right. Aren't those called viral vectors? Y y yeah. Yeah. So does that sound like something you might be interested in? Well, I think we should take a minute to consider the ethics involved here. What was it? Haven't people died from gene therapy? What if there's an immune response? Dude, just don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Ready to meet your gene, Mr. Humphreys? Sure thing, Doc. Come on in, Gene. Well, howdy, fellas. I'm Gene. So, you're gonna put this guy inside of me. Oh, dear. Let's choose your viral vector, Gene. Retrovirus? Adenovirus? Herpes simplex virus? Well, in the New England Journal of Medicine RPE65 gene therapy trial, it says they use an adeno-associated virus. Ah. Sounds good. Let's do it. Now get in the syringe, Gene. I can't believe he fit in there. Well, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Well, Mr. Humphreys, how's the world look? Actually, pretty much the same as before. Well, that's normal. In gene therapy, it's often months before we know if the operation was a success or not. How about now? Eh, you know, it's, it's not as bad as before. We'll give it a little longer. Now? Whoa! It's starting to come together, Doc. Whoa. Well, hello there. I, uh, think I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can uh see the door. Oh, uh, good good. Good thing. See ya.